This is Pogo. Pogo is an artificial intelligence agent and he has a problem. Everybody wants to touch his meat. And as many of you might know, there is only one real way to protect your tiny meat from predators. Fortified Archer Towers. Pogo will have to learn all by himself what is the best strategy of placing towers in such a way that his treasures remain intact. Here is how it all works. The map is divided in a 20 by 20 grid with one spawner and one meat cart. The spawner will, well, it will spawn waves of enemies, which will try to find the shortest path towards the meat cart. In order to stop them, Pogo will have to build towers on the empty tiles, which will cost him 200 coins, or upgrade the existing towers to a higher level, which slightly cheaper 150 coins. Killing a monster will give Pogo some coins, depending on the level of that enemy. However, since the monsters just want meat and Pogo is the one actually killing them, it begs the question, who's the real monster? The longer it goes, the more difficult the waves will get, so Pogo will have to find the perfect balance between positioning, amount and the level of his towers. A level 1 tower has a range of 2 tiles and will require 2 shots to kill an enemy, shooting 1 projectile every 2 seconds. It can be improved to a tier 2 tower, which has twice the damage, twice the range, and twice the attack speed of a regular tower. The last wave will be a boss which has way more health than the other monsters, but is also much slower. So Pogo will really have to focus on having a solid plan. In case you're new on this channel, you might be wondering how exactly will Pogo learn all of that, and the answer is simple, reinforcement learning. In simple words, Pogo will get rewarded for correct actions, such as building a tower, while being punished for the wrong actions, like losing his meat or simply for existing. Yeah, that last one, as cruel as it might sound, actually serves a real purpose beyond having Pogo feel miserable for our entertainment. Punishing the little dude for every second of his existence will motivate Pogo to complete the task as quick as possible, resulting in better strategies. If you'd like to find out more about reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence and computer science, now you finally got a chance to do that, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn while actually doing the thing, with thousands of interactive courses in math, data analysis, programming and AI. Each lesson is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers and researchers and is filled with hands-on problem solving for sharpening your critical thinking skills. Brilliant's short and concise lessons allow you to gather bits of knowledge whenever you have some free time, which will later stack up in huge results. Get hands-on with real language models as you explore how they build vocabulary. Understand the importance of training data by comparing different models. Learn how to tune a language model to generate different kinds of outputs, whether it's poetry or a cover letter. Go to brilliant.org slash or click the link in the description and enjoy 30 days for free as well as a 20% discount on their annual subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for being a long-term sponsor of this channel and now let's start with the training. At the beginning, I had everything spawn randomly on the map. The enemy castle, the meat cart and even Pogo would spawn on different cell every time. I thought that would help Pogo learn better the concept of the simulation, rather than remembering a best set of actions for that specific map. However, it didn't seem to really work, like, at all. <laughs> The only thing Pogo learned was to spam towers at his spawn positions in hope that the enemies will pass by. I assume it has to do with Pogo randomly getting spawned right next to the enemy's path, so I tried fixing by having predefined spawn positions. Now our AI will have to move closer to the enemy path in order for the towers to reach them, so hopefully the results will be better. Initially, Pogo kept on doing his Pogo things, spamming towers and doing other dumb things. Soon, however, his curiosity won and he actually started moving closer to the enemy line, but no towers were being built. All he did was run in circles like a broken Roomba. That's when I started thinking that maybe the spawning wasn't the problem after all. Perhaps Poco just had a bad idea of the entire environment. I know it might sound counterintuitive, but in order for Pogo to flourish in this simulation, he needs to have a quite clear picture of what the hell is going on. Currently, he was able to see thanks to a set of rays that he would shoot all around himself. Whenever such a ray would collide with a tower or an enemy, Pogo would receive the necessary information about that object, such as the type and the distance towards that object. Well, this is usually enough for my other simulations, in this example Pogo seems to require more data about the environment, so I did just that. 
I made it so Pogo has exact information about every single tile and now he knows whether the tile is occupied by a structure and knows exactly what the structure is, he knows what tile he is currently on, etc. Spoiler alert, that didn't work either. <laughs> I even tried doing what I do best in these situations and I added more punishment for Pogo, but that didn't work either. At this point, I've been struggling with this project for about two weeks and I was already getting quite desperate. It was similar to when you opened the fridge for the tenth time in the same day, hoping that something new magically appeared, just to be disappointed by the same results over and over again. I even tried using a different machine learning algorithm and after endless hours of tinkering around, I finally got it working and I might be using this solution quite often in future projects as well. Now, Pogo doesn't need any rays or environment info because he gets all of it using a grid sensor. Long story short, Pogo can now get all the necessary information in a 20 by 20 grid around himself. So basically a mix of previously attempted solutions. Anyways, that seemed to be a good idea, so I started training again. He started by spamming towers once again, placing them in between the mid cart and the enemy spawner in what proved to be quite a good formation. This time, however, it seems Pogo actually managed to get better at it, cleaning the waves without hesitation, but let's keep in mind he was playing at reduced difficulty. He had 4000 coins, which is basically infinite ammo, and he was unable to upgrade towers just yet. Also, there was no boss wave for now. Once it was clear the grid sensor is actually working, I returned the default difficulty and that's when I noticed another small issue. Apparently, it's impossible to win the game in the current state, lol. <laughs> yep, you would basically run out of money no matter how you build and that won't be enough to complete the harder waves. I quickly fixed the spawn frequencies and gold drop to make it feasible and started my last training. By the way, I know the towers are being placed a little off grid and they have no clue why that happens. In editor mode everything looks great, but when I click play they move by a bit misaligning themselves. Hope that doesn't trigger your OCD, but if it does, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button to let me know about it. The training started with Pogo recklessly spamming towers whenever he had enough money the greedy bastard doesn't even realize most of them can't even reach the enemies. Well, seems like it didn't take him too long to realize it makes more sense to build the towers closer to the enemy path. I mean, he's still confused as fuck, don't get me wrong, but at least this time, either due to huge brains or sheer luck, I wonder which it is lol, Pogo built 4 towers in what looks like one gigantic building. Pretty cool, and what is even cooler, this allowed Pogo to secure his first win, and that's only on round 3. Sure enough, Pogo failed to repeat the success, placing towers all over the place in the next rounds. He did have several interesting attempts, like this one on round 12, where Pogo succeeded at redirecting the enemies a little bit, winning himself some time, but he still failed to secure the round. On round 13, he built something that resembles customs or a gate of sorts. It proved to be quite effective against the level 1 and level 2 enemies, however the gates failed to stop the boss from passing right through them and getting a taste of Pogo's meat. Another interesting strategy can be observed on round 21. Pogo, after placing two small towers in the middle, which will win him some time and money, approaches the spawn point and starts building right next to it. I wasn't sure what's the benefit in that, but then I remembered the existence punishment. This way the enemies are eliminated faster, thus less existence punishment. See? I told you it serves a good purpose. The boss almost gets away, but it is stopped by the small towers Pogo placed at the very beginning. Nice! Ok, so you get the gist of it, but before we get to the final results, I want to quickly mention that this video idea was suggested by Selden on my Discord channel, where we had the video idea contest. Congratulations to Selden and thanks to everyone who participated and shared their cool ideas. Anyways, I've kept training Pogo for about a day and here is the final result. And to make it even more interesting, I multiplied all enemy health by 2, including the boss, but also doubled the gold drop from them. Pogo starts safe by placing a tower in the middle and immediately upgrading it to tier 2, which should be enough for the first wave. Notice how now it requires 2 hits from a level 2 tower to kill a level 1 enemy. 
Pogo places a second tower right next to the first one and attempts to upgrade it despite not having enough money, which I expect shall change quite soon. With enough money, he swiftly upgrades the second tower and after getting some more, he builds a third tower and once again upgrades it in preparation for wave number 3. Now we have level 2 enemies, which require a total of 6 hits from a tier 2 tower and 12 hits from a tier 1 tower, so the fact that Pogo upgraded all of his towers now proves to be quite useful. Not a single enemy has passed yet and the money problem seems to be vanishing away with each enemy dropping 100 coins. After earning about a thousand coins, Pogo finally starts building more towers, which shall prove crucial at the boss wave. This wave takes quite some time, so I've sped up the video. We can see Pogo using one of his old technique of building a square of towers, but this time it is improved. This time Pogo won't limit himself with a square and is building an entire freaking wall forcing the enemies to walk around it, taking massive damage in the process. Very nice! Here comes the boss. It gets close to the towers and oh no, it changes directions. Instead of going down as intended by Pogo, the boss has decided to go from the top and... Oh, never mind, the boss is dead, lol. That's it for this video, but make sure to check out this other video of mine where Pogo has to learn how to properly handle big balls in my favorite childhood flash game, Bubble Trouble. Bye.